Breathe in. Breathe out. What just came in through your lungs? Into your lungs? Well, the obvious answer is it's air. And air really is just part of our atmosphere. It's the air around us. It's the substance that isn't land and isn't water. It's made up of mostly gases and lakes of liquids. But what exactly is it? And if we're going to better understand climate and really ultimately weather, we have to know what is our atmosphere. Well, in this video, we're going to be doing three different things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to discuss what the atmosphere is made of. Two, we're going to explain why pressure and temperature change as you go up in altitude. And lastly, we're going to describe and layer, label the different layers of our atmosphere. So let's take a look again, right? Let's try it again. I want everyone to breathe in. Breathe out. What just came into your lungs? Well, I understand air, but more specifically, atoms and chemicals and molecules that have been wafting around in our atmosphere are coming into your lungs and come out to your lungs. But what is that stuff? What is the stuff that is actually in our atmosphere? Well, obviously there has to be some oxygen. You and I survive on oxygen and we give off carbon dioxide, so there has to be carbon dioxide. But there's actually other materials in there. About 78% of our atmosphere is actually something called nitrogen gas. And nitrogen gas really doesn't do anything. It's pretty much inert, they would call it. You breathe it in, you breathe it out, it doesn't affect you. About 21% of our atmosphere is oxygen the stuff we need for life. Well, let's look at that again. That's 99% of our atmosphere. 99% of our atmosphere is nitrogen and oxygen. Well, what's left? 1%. In that 1%, the vast majority, about 99 tenths of a percent, is something called argon, which, like nitrogen, is inert. It doesn't do anything. And very, very, very little of it is carbon dioxide and everything else you see in our atmosphere, all the other pollution. So really, if you want to look at it, we could even put all of the atmosphere into a giant pie chart. And you can see right in this one right here, purple and blue are showing you that most of our atmosphere is made up of nitrogen and oxygen. Man, there's little bits of what's left. You can see that right there. Now, all that nitrogen and oxygen is being held to our planet through, air, or through gravity. Right? Our planet holds their atmosphere together and it pulls all of those things towards us. As it's holding all our atmosphere together, it stacks up the nitrogen and oxygen and all the other molecules in our atmosphere closer to our surface and slowly fewer and fewer as we go out. That creates more air pressure closer to the surface and less on the top. Think of it like a cheerleader pyramid. At the bottom, you have all these people being stacked up there and they have to support all the people above them. And as you go up, there's fewer people, but they don't have as much pressure. The cheerleaders on the bottom have to feel the weight of all the other cheerleaders above them, right? So they have to take all that pressure. While at the top, they don't have anyone above them and they don't feel any pressure. So the air at the bottom of our planet, of the atmosphere next to us, has the greatest air pressure. It has the most pushing down on it. Whereas at the top, there isn't much air pressure. Now, I think you've probably experienced this. If you've ever been in an airplane or, or maybe just driven over a mountain, you'll notice that your ears pop. That popping is because your ears are actually going up into lower pressure, and the air entrapped inside your ear is under higher pressure when you are down at the bottom, and so it pops and releases out of your ear. It's all because gravity is holding them down, and there's greater air pressure at the bottom and less at the top. You can also describe it this way. There's more of our molecules of our atmosphere at the bottom and less at the top. As you go up in altitude, the air pressure goes down. And as you go down in altitude towards the bottom, towards sea level, air pressure goes up. So, air pressure isn't the only thing, though, that changes as you go up and down in the atmosphere. Actually, air temperature also changes. Now, when we talk about temperature of the air, you've got to think of it differently than whether it feels warm or cold. Because when you're feeling warm, that has more to do with how much of the air you're interacting and less to do with how much warmth is there. And you're going to see why. When we look at air temperature, really what we're looking at is the energy that's inside the air particle. Right? So think of it. 
the lower atmosphere, there's more particles, right? We just saw that, that gravity's holding them down. There's more of them there. And they might have less density or less, less energy, but because there's more of them and you feel them more, you interact with them more, it feels really warm. At the highest parts of our atmosphere, there's lots of, lots of energy, but not much air. It has low density. And so it would feel cold because you're not interacting as much with the air particles. The changes in the atmosphere, and we're going to see in a second that the air pressure goes up and down, it's, or the air temperature, excuse me, goes up and down, it's all based upon what happens inside that layer. It happens to do with the density. So here, let's take a look at it. Here is an actual graph showing you the air temperature changing as you go up through the atmosphere. You can see, generally speaking, it's kind of a seesaw direction. Down here close to us, the further down you get, the warmer it gets. Right? Down at the bottom sea level, it's warmer compared to if you go to the top, it gets colder. You can kind of think of that. Down here in Sandy, it's relatively warm compared to the top of Mount Hood, which is higher up and colder. But then something strange happens. <coughs> when you go up into the stratosphere, it gets warmer. Now, it may not feel warmer because, again, remember, there's less air there to interact with you, to feel the energy. And that's because of ozone. The ozone layer is in the stratosphere and it's trapping, helping to trap heat and warm up the stratosphere. You can see that it gets cold again in the mesosphere and then when you get to the thermosphere, it really gets warm. In fact, in the thermosphere, really, that's in the space. But because there's so few particles in there, it feels extremely cold, even though the particles that are there are really energy. Right? We'll talk about that more in class and we'll see if we can figure that out. So let's really look at these layers. Right, there's four of them I really want to talk about, and we're going to see how they relate to temperature and pressure. Generally speaking, pressure is going to be lower uh, as the further up you go. But here we go. Well, the first layer, the lowest layer, the one that's the closest to us and we are actually living, is the troposphere. And the troposphere makes up 90% of the stuff in our atmosphere. So remember when we looked at all those particles all the stuff, the nitrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide and argon and all the other trace stuff. 90% of that is in the troposphere. It has water vapor, it has air pollution, it has weather, clouds, life, everything that we deal with. It's also right the lowest layer. It goes pretty much from zero to about 16 kilometers. That's about 10 miles up. Now, it's not that high if you think about it. 10 miles, that's 50,000 feet, roughly. Right? That's not that big. 10 miles is also the distance from here to Sandy to, say, Gresham. And that's 90% of our atmosphere. Now, sitting on top of the troposphere is a layer called the stratosphere. And the stratosphere is from about 16 to 50 kilometers. Well, that's roughly to about 30 miles up, if you wanted. And you'll notice that the graph, it's coldest at the bottom, and it is warmer as you go up at almost to the freezing level. And the reason why is the ozone layer is helping to trap, let, uh, trap and warm the earth. The ozone layer is really important for you and I, especially me, my nice pasty white skin. You see, the ozone layer helps shelter us from powerful UV rays from the sun. It actually absorbs UV rays that cause sunburns. It kind of is sunscreen for the planet. And that a sunscreen, or the ozone layer, is keeping us from having sunburns and having the UV rays do all sorts of weird things and cause cancer. So a very important part of our atmosphere. Well, if we go continue up to our next highest layer, you see it's called the mesosphere. And that goes from about 50 kilometers all the way up to 80 kilometers or 50 miles. It is the coldest layer. There is no ozone to shelter us. And this very thin. It goes from about you know, 135 degrees below zero. That's pretty cold up there. And it's really windy. You have winds of 120 miles an hour, really going fast. When you see a shooting star, that's actually occurring in the mesosphere as a particle of sand or something from a, in space. Some dust is going very fast and warming up through the mesosphere. The mesosphere, for according to NASA, really is the boundary between the Earth and the space. So at the very top of the 50 mile mark, that is the line between Earth, the atmosphere, and the space line. 50 miles though, and you think about it, really isn't that far. 50 miles if you left Sandy would take you pretty close to Forest Grove or Hillsboro. 
maybe a little bit further, maybe Forest Grove. Now, that isn't that far. And you think that's all that is separates us from space and the planet. Not very far. Well, if we wanted to continue on outside of the mesosphere is what is we call the thermosphere. And the thermosphere <coughs> extends to about 400 miles, roughly, really far out there about 600 kilometers. And it traps gases that absorb solar radiation and let a few of them in. And it can reach really hot temperatures of 1,700 degrees Celsius, depending upon which direction the solar winds and the wind coming off the sun hits. Now remember, it doesn't always mean that it's going to be really warm there. Just because there's a high energy and it's really hot there, there's really few particles. So you really wouldn't, wouldn't feel as warm as you might be see. So there's our four layers. We have the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and then the top layer, the thermosphere. When we look at climate and weather, really we're looking at definitely the troposphere and a little bit of the stratosphere. And we're going to focus on those two as you move into climate and the weather. So I want you to keep in mind, if we were able to shrink all of our globe, all the Earth, down to about 20 inches, which is the size of a fairly large globe that you might have in your house, our atmosphere would only be about one millimeter. That's not that big. And yet that is all the atmosphere that separates us from, let's say, the moon. The moon doesn't have any atmosphere. So the atmosphere is really important. So what did we do in this video? Well, we did three things. I discussed the atmosphere and what it's made of. Carbon dioxide, very little. A little bit more argon, much more oxygen, and a lot of nitrogen. We explain why the pr pressure changes in the atmosphere. It's lower at the bottom, it's higher when you're at the, close to the surface because all the air is pushing down, and lower towards the top because there's less air pushing down. The temperature changes with altitude based upon what's in the, at, in the air and what the energy level is. We then described and labeled the layers. We said there was a troposphere, which is the lowest and the most important for us in weather. There's a stratosphere, which is the next layer that warms because of the ozone layer. There's the mesosphere, which is showing where meteors are forming and is the line between Earth and space. And finally, the thermosphere, which is sheltering us from solar rays. I want to remind you how these videos work. So if I'm moving too fast, remember you can always hit pause or rewind or watching it again. Maybe take a second and watch it all again to refresh your mind. But always remember to keep moving forward.